do. Um, I'm pretty sure I do sugarcoat everything. It's mm -hmm. always covered in a little fairy dust, mm -hmm. just to make it more delicious. Okay. Um, I see that there are quite a few boys in the room as well. So uh, this isn't for you, but it is for you because it's for everyone. So um, kick off with a little survey. Um, put your hand up if you're working in IT. Maybe I should say put your hand up if you're not working in IT. Well, <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. That means I don't have to change anything at all. <laughs> put your hand up if you are a woman. <laughs> They say presentations are like the movie Star Wars. You, the audience, are the hero. Does anyone know who this, this young guy is here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, Oops, I will go. And I, the presenter, am like this old guy here. Who is this? Yeah. Right. So you will come. You will come to me in search of a solution for a problem. Problem being where have all the girls gone? Like Luke went in search of Obi Wan Kenobi to help him win against the Empire. Obi Wan gave Luke a special gift, which was a deeper understanding of the Force. He trains him to use a magical tool, which is his lightsaber, and he helps him in his fight against the Empire. Now, I'm going to talk to you today about an exciting way to compete in the marketplace. I'm going to give you insight that will improve your lives, and I'm going to show you how I can save you time and money. <laughs> so, I'm going to present for a little bit less than an hour. I usually wake that up with some videos and I'm going to ask you some questions. And I want no one sleeping in the back, even if you can't hear me. And especially no one sleeping in the front. I may or may not do an exam at the end, depending on you know, how we're going to be seen. The reason that we're here is that the Australian Computer Society did a women's survey, which they send out every year. Um, it looks at some interesting trends, and it asks women a bunch of questions to try and figure out why they went into IT, what they're interested in, and why there aren't too many people there right now. 56% of the workforce are women, and yet we have less than 20% in the field of IT. Probably they're all working at Bankwest. <laughs> I'm going to give you some interesting stats. I'm going to uh, show you some funny clips. I'm going to give you some ideas that might help us get out of this painful situation. And I'm going to give you a call to action, which I expect you to rise to. So we know half the population, roughly half the population, is made up of women. Those of you with an education in maths or biology or theology might even have looked into whether that's more by luck or design. More than half of university students are women. More than half of math and science students are women. But in computing science, we have less than 
What is that all about? Well, we do pay women less money, but everyone does. In Australia, the national pay gap is around 17%. In WA, we do even worse, 25.8%. <laughs> well, we don't do as badly in the IT industry as many other industries do. Although, bizarrely, the construction industry is apparently the best one to work in if you are a woman. <laughs> Which I think is the weirdest thing to hear, that an industry that requires strength and endurance traditionally is finding it easier to recruit women and is doing better and is paying them better than an industry like ours that requires nothing, no particular male physical attributes to show the advantage. A field in which we are changing the world, which is IT, and we are losing to the quick people. <laughs> Women work more hours, are happier with what they receive, and they don't take as many sickies, and more of them have higher education. There are so many misconceptions about IT. Many young people just do not see it as an exciting and vibrant career. They do not connect the technology they use, like smartphones, like tablets, like consoles, like touchscreen TVs, voice-activated technology, none of that with IT that they see in the industry. One of my friends said I used to work for IBM, and there was a rumor that uh, the guys that existed in the data centers, never ever got out to see the light of day, that they would scuttle around and uh, if you went into the IBM data centers, you would never see them, you wouldn't be able to look directly at them. You might hear them scuttling between the racks of servers, but you know, it was, they were not real people. And they said that the, the security traps that they had when you went into the IBM data centers were not there to keep intruders out, they were actually there to keep IT is a field that requires people to work in isolation, to code and to code hard, that it requires a scientific mind, that it requires a man's mind, and that IT doesn't help people. These misconceptions are why women are not choosing to work in IT today. So we have an image problem. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and on again? Hello, IT? Have you tried turning it off and on again? Hello, IT. Yeah, have you tried turning it off and on again? Hello, IT. <laughs> Something's wrong with my computer. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> oh dear, thanks. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> Hello, IT, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> have you tried sticking it up your arse? <laughs> and, um, uh, Mr. Wendell's laptop is broken. Oh, my God, No, so, oh, have you tried, um, turning it off and on again? No, we haven't. Hello, IT, have you tried turning it off? You know what, I'm sick soon then. <laughs> From this moment on, everything is going to be different. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah, but that's an important part of the process. Yes, if you don't complete that part, there's no way that you're going to be able to do the next bit. Okay, so now, turn it back on again! <laughs> and I have to say, have you tried turning it off and on again about a thousand times a day? It's like a bloody catchphrase. All right, okay, hundred pounds says I don't say it again today. How's that for posture? <laughs> Some are good at it, some aren't, but that's more reflection.
reflection of the individual child and of their gender, or it might be a reflection of the teacher. Test scores indicate that sex has no bearing on ability. However, boys are better than girls in those tests when you tell them that that will be the case. So if you say to the girls that they have no chance of scoring well on this test, that boys always score better in science tests, that boys always do better in computing, that will show up in the results. The girls will believe you. Um, apart from me, because I always do the opposite of whatever anyone tells me. So, no real issue on education or skill. It's a matter of interest and the reputation we have. I'm going to show you another trick now on Big Bang Theory on how we should get girls into IT. Um, there are many pertinent points in this clip. Um, there are some of my friends that will refuse to watch this show because they say it's excessively stereotypical and no one is really like that. I think it's very funny because I think that the people we know many of them are very much like that. Um, Sheldon does make some wildly inappropriate conclusions. Um, but he is quite correct that we do need to spark the interest of young people, not just girls, but boys as well, when they are very young. <coughs> topic is encouraging women in science. Can we at least play a less sexist game? How is it sexist? Well, my character wields a battle axe as well as any man. Not to mention she has mammary glands that can nurse a family of 30. And have enough milk left over to open a Baskin Robbins. Mother, warrior princess, franchise owner, I hear glass ceiling shattering all over town. Sheldon, you're always saying how much smarter you are than me. Spend five seconds and come up with one idea on how to get more women into science. All your ideas address the issue at a university level. By then it's too late. You need to design an outreach program that targets girls at the middle school level and sets them on an academic track towards the hard sciences. That's actually good. Why didn't I think of that? Some people are otters, some people are rocks. I wonder if there's a way we could give the idea a trial run. Maybe I could call my old middle school, see if we can talk to some of the female students. Yeah, but that's great. Try to set up something for the three of us to go over there. Now, uh, hold on. While I'm comfortable speaking about science, I'm not sure how to spark the interest of school children. Better Google it. What exactly are you looking up? How do I get 12-year-old girls excited?
be careful of what you are saying to your children and to the people in your life around you. Listen to the stories that you tell them and you tell yourself and ask yourself if those rumors are really true or are you just repeating stuff that you've heard and making it more true because of your repetition. Are the stories you tell turning the people in your life away from IT? When you go home from work, are you excited? Uh, do people look at you and think that must be a great career that they're in? Or do they think that you look depressed and tired and bored and they like, never want to go into that career and they can't find work? Are you talking about changing lives or are you just talking? Not only skills. Think of the skills that you that will help you do well in IT. The skills that we use every day, and I don't think that they are particularly manly skills. I don't think I can remember a day at work that I've spent working in isolation. Um, and I use those skills every day in the workplace, and they are as well utilised in both men and women. Well, here's a colleague of mine talking about the skills she uses. She's in quite a, a hard technical role. My name is Jessica Miller. I work at Microsoft Research in Redmond. I work as a research software development engineer. I work on a team of designers and project managers and developers and testers that help support researchers when they want to take their research ideas and either publish them in the academic world or put them into Microsoft products. Many stars aligned to allow me to pick this profession, um, but the one that is probably most important is that computer science is very practical and what I did in the classroom, I could see it uh, being what I did in the real world. I work at Microsoft because I had an internship here seven or eight years ago and I really enjoyed the team and stayed in contact with the manager and got a position with him. What I actually do on a daily basis kind of depends on the day. Um, I get a new project, completely different project, once every six months or so, so I'm constantly learning. So a lot of my job is just learning about the latest project and the technologies we're using. A lot of it is coordinating between designers and researchers and myself and other engineers. Um, and then a lot of it is coding as well. I collaborate with other people in my job, um, mainly with the researchers because we're taking their ideas and trying to polish them up for product. Um, but I also work with designers to make their technology perhaps prettier, more fun to use. Um, and then I also collaborate with my fellow colleagues to try to solve problems and learn about the different technologies we're using. If you think about creative and being the sense of creating things, that's the entire definition of being an engineer, you're building things. Um, so I'm building software every day. Um, and then from the more artistic perspective or connotation of creative, um, there's a lot of creativity in designing and um, building interesting user interface. I told you that I would save you time and money, and the simple answer on how to do that is balance your teams. Teams with a mixture of men and women in them outperform male-only teams every single time. I don't know whether men step it up uh, whenever there is a woman present, or whether they're trying to outdo each other, or uh, not lose face, or whether bringing a woman in just makes for better collaboration, uh, more open communication or whether everyone just gets it together when one is present. But I do know that we work better together. I think that's why many people spend their whole lives searching for their perfect partner, because they want someone who will be the person that they can spend the rest of their lives with, but that person will have their back, that person will stand with them against the world. Why do we do that if we don't believe that we work better as a team? Now, this is pretty small to those of you at the back. Um, what we see here, though, is that women in all other science fields, engineering and mathematics, are on the rise, uh, but not in computing. There we have a significant and continuous drop. Science has never really been very cool. 
but the fact is, science as a whole is attracting them. Even finance attracts large numbers of women, and I think that it should have exactly the same reputation as IT. But it's only us that's scaring them away. Now, I know that some of you might be old school, you know, and don't talk to the business of what you use and sort of that. Probably not so much so in Manifest, but, but we are in a new world now anyway. Everyone is moving to the cloud, whether it's still on-premises and private, uh, or as you are in Office 365, or, you know, one of those lesser offerings. Your tin is nothing but a commodity. And the business calls the shots. The CFO decides whether he's going to keep your team or offshore it to Malaysia. Adapt or die, my friends, is what I say. Well, adapt or be outsourced anyway. So those of us that can change, who can drive business value by collaboration, by understanding, understanding how technology can change lives, are the ones who will survive and thrive. We need to be an inspiration to the next generation. We need to call them to a career in IT, to be part of what's next. To be the ones who will change the world, or we may as well just go home. Tiny little clip, we are easily offended with what you haven't said to me, so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like people. Oh, well, no, that's not fair, Roy. Have you met all of them? I've met enough of them. People. What a bunch of bastards. <laughs> so I have a couple of clips now that illustrate how working in IT is changing lives. And if you look around you in your lives, I'm pretty sure that many of you can see there are many, many examples of how it's doing that. Put up your hand if you were around before the internet. So that's 1982, so if you, were, <laughs> if you were born after 1982, then you are a baby and I feel very old. <laughs> so I have a couple of examples here of technology that was initially meant to entertain people, and now they are using it for um, medical science and to help people's lives. This is a group of engineers from the University of Washington, and they have hacked up a Microsoft Connect device and come up with something to help doctors perform surgeries. Since that point, there's a number of awards that have been announced for open source hacking up Connect, and the implications that these new technologies would have on people is uh, quite amazing, I think. It's really only in the beginning stages, um, but there's, there's just so much that can be done with it. I think if you, there might be a few of you in the room who could be thinking of entering WAITA, which is the WAIT Awards. They've just opened the submissions recently. Uh, Adquest is a big sponsor of those awards, so perhaps this will give you some ideas. Microsoft's Connect is the newest way for gamers to explore virtual reality. But that reality could soon be on the cutting edge of medicine. Move back and forth. Frederick Ryan is a graduate student from Sweden working with the UW electrical engineering professors. His goal? To one day make surgery safer for doctors by using virtual environments. And the problem with surgical robotics today is that the surgeon can see what he's doing, but he can't feel what he's doing. Ryan recently took up a challenge from his professors to hack into Microsoft's Connect and reprogram it to add sensory feedback a process that could take some hackers up to two months to complete. Frederick did it in slightly less time. I bought it on Friday and was finished on Monday. The rapid development of this type of technology with Connect has given students and professors at the University of Washington endless applications to look at. But one area in particular just might be remote surgery, especially if the surgeon and the patient are not in the same place. You know, an emergency situation after an earthquake, maybe on a battlefield situation, and that's hard without a sense of touch. The Kinex infrared camera can pick up 3D images and gives feedback regarding depth of field. When the red dot moves over an object, the joystick used by the operator can feel resistance and will react as if something is there, as evident by my hand moving upwards. There's a, a lot more things it can do and a lot, of, a lot more hacks that creative people out there around the world are going to be 
applying to the Connect, and we hope to contribute to that as well. Right now, the team is exploring Connect's potential to improve robotic surgeries by creating off-limit areas that would protect vital organs around the body. But the biggest bonus for the team, the Connect is relatively cheap and mass-produced because it comes from video games, making the appeal for hackers all that more intriguing. Bring out theoretical physicist Dr. Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> Hello, female children. <laughs> Allow me to inspire you with a story about a great female scientist. Polish born, French educated, Madame Curie. Co discoverer of radioactivity, she was a hero of science. 
until her hair fell out, her vomit and stool became filled with blood, and she was poisoned to death by her own discovery. With a little hard work, I see no reason why that can't happen to any of you. Are we done? Can we go? Is this change the world? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 